In 1939, Charles Minnie Dole saw a need in the Army. As the president of the National Ski Patrol, he saw that our troops were not equipped to fight in tough winter conditions. Minnie knew the U.S. Army needed mountain troops. Dole spent months lobbying the War Department to train troops in mountain and winter warfare. In September 1940, Dole was able to present his case to General George C. Marshall, the Army Chief of Staff, who caused the Army to take action on Dole's proposals to create ski units. In December 1941, the Army activated its first mountain unit, the 87th Mountain Infantry Battalion at Fort Lewis, Washington. The unit was dubbed Mini Ski Troops in honor of Dole. The 10th Mountain Division came into being in July 1943 at Camp Hale, Colorado as the 10th Light Division Alpine. The combat power of the division was contained in the 85th, 86th, and 87th Infantry Regiments. Training at Camp Hale honed the skills of the soldiers to fight and survive under the most brutal mountain conditions. In June 1944, the division was shipped to Camp Swift, Texas to prepare for the Louisiana maneuvers of 1944, which were later canceled. In November 1944, the 10th Division was redesignated the 10th Mountain Division. That same month, the Blue and White Mountain Tab was authorized. The division landed in Italy in January 1945, and its first order of business was to capture Riva Ridge, a German stronghold blocking the path to Mount Belvedere and the Po Valley. Allied forces had tried to capture Riva Ridge without success. The 86th chose a lightly guarded 1,500-foot cliff for their attack. At dawn, they took the Germans by surprise, securing the ridge and paving the way to Mount Belvedere. Shortly after the 86th took Riva Ridge, the 85th and 87th regiments made a bayonet attack on Mount Belvedere, again surprising the Germans. The 10th suppressed seven counterattacks over the next three days while planning their next move. With Riva Ridge and Mount Belvedere secured, the division was in position to break the Germans' Apennine Mountain Line and take Highway 65, clearing the way to the Po Valley. In April 1945, the final phase of the war in Italy began. With the 85th and 87th leading the 5th Army Drive, the division attacked toward the Po Valley. On the morning of April 23rd, the 10th was the first division to reach the Po River, and the 1st Battalion of the 87th Mountain Infantry made the crossing under fire. On April 27th, the first troops reached the south end of Lake Garda, cutting off the German Army's main escape route to the Brenner Pass. During its 114 days of combat, the 10th completely destroyed five elite German divisions and suffered casualties of 992 killed in action and 4,154 wounded. Since the 10th Mountain Division was one of the last to enter combat, it was to be used in the projected invasion of Japan. After the surrender of Japan, the 10th was sent home to Camp Carson, Colorado. The 10th Mountain Division was disbanded in November 1945. The 10th was reactivated at Fort Riley, Kansas in 1948 as a training division. The division's mission was processing and training new soldiers for service with other Army units. The division trained over 120,000 men in five years. In January 1954, the Department of the Army announced that the 10th Division would become a combat infantry division and be sent to Europe under a new rotation policy. In what became known as Operation Gyroscope, the 10th replaced the 1st Infantry Division in Germany. With nine infantry battalions, four artillery battalions, and one tank battalion, the 10th Infantry Division was a powerful military force. The 10th was replaced by the 3rd Infantry Division in 1958 and inactivated at Fort Benning, Georgia. The division was officially reactivated in February 1985 at Fort Drum, New York, as the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry. It was the Army's first new division in over a decade, and the first in the Northeast since World War II. The 10th Mountain Division was designed to meet a wide range of worldwide, infantry-intensive contingency missions. Equipment design was oriented toward reduced size and weight for reasons of both strategic and tactical mobility. Throughout the 90s, the 10th was called upon to serve in Iraq during the first Gulf War, provide disaster relief to South Florida after Hurricane Andrew, distribute relief supplies in Somalia, restore the elected government in Haiti, and keep peace in Bosnia and Kosovo. After adding humanitarian, training, and operational deployments together, the 10th Mountain Division has earned the distinction of being the most deployed Army Division during the 1990s a period which had seen the greatest number of missions for United States military forces since the end of World War II. 
After the September 11th attacks, the 10th Mountain Division was the first division-level headquarters in Afghanistan. We have maintained a steady presence in Afghanistan throughout the war, and it is fitting we will be the last division headquarters deployed there in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. In 2004, 10th Mountain Division units began deploying into northern Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Our soldiers provided security, humanitarian aid, and trained Iraqi police and army personnel. The 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry has a rich and robust history, both in combat and non-combat missions. The soldiers of the division take pride in their service and exemplify what it means to be a mountain soldier. The following are the division's Congressional Medal of Honor winners from World War II to present day. Private First Class John McGrath earned the Medal of Honor for actions while serving in Italy during World War II. When his company was pinned down by heavy artillery, mortar, and small arms fire near Casaldiano, Italy, volunteering to act as a scout, armed with only a rifle, he charged headlong into withering fire, killing two Germans and wounding three in order to capture a machine gun. Carrying the enemy weapon across an open field through heavy fire, he neutralized two more machine gun nests. He then circled behind four other Germans, killing them with a burst as they were firing on his company. Spotting another dangerous enemy position to his right, he knelt with the machine gun in his arms and exchanged fire with the Germans until he had killed two and wounded three. The enemy now poured increased mortar and artillery fire on the company's newly won position. Private First Class McGrath fearlessly volunteered again to brave the shelling in order to collect a report of casualties. Heroically carrying out this task, he made the supreme sacrifice. Staff Sergeant Jared Monty earned the Medal of Honor for actions while serving in Nuristan Province, Afghanistan on June 21, 2006. While Staff Sergeant Monty was leading a mission aimed at gathering intelligence and directing fire against the enemy, his 16-man patrol was attacked by some 50 enemy fighters. Staff Sergeant Monty quickly directed his men to set up a defensive position behind a rock formation. He called for indirect fire support, accurately targeting the rounds upon the enemy, who had closed to within 50 meters of his position. While still directing fire, Staff Sergeant Monty personally engaged the enemy with his rifle and a grenade, disrupting an attempt to flank his patrol. Staff Sergeant Monty realized that one of his soldiers was lying wounded in the open ground between the advancing enemy and the patrol's position. With complete disregard for his own safety, Staff Sergeant Monty twice attempted to move from behind the cover of the rocks into the face of relentless enemy fire to rescue his fallen comrade. Staff Sergeant Monty made a third attempt to cross open terrain through intense enemy fire and was mortally wounded, sacrificing his own life in an effort to save his fellow soldier. Staff Sergeant Monty's selfless acts of heroism inspired his patrol to fight off the larger enemy force. Captain William Swenson earned the Medal of Honor for actions while serving as embedded advisor to the Afghan National Border Police in Kunar Province, Afghanistan on September 8, 2009. That morning, more than 60 well-armed, well-positioned enemy fighters ambushed Captain Swenson's combat team as it moved on foot into the village of Ganjagal. As the enemy unleashed a barrage of rocket-propelled grenade, mortar, and machine gun fire, Captain Swenson immediately returned fire and coordinated and directed the response of his Afghan border police. Surrounded on three sides by enemy forces inflicting effective and accurate fire, Captain Swenson coordinated air assets, indirect fire support, and medical evacuation. He maneuvered uncovered to render medical aid to a wounded fellow soldier. Captain Swenson stopped administering aid long enough to throw a grenade at approaching enemy forces before assisting with moving the soldier for air evacuation. With complete disregard for his own safety, Captain Swenson unhesitatingly led a team in an unarmored vehicle into the kill zone, exposing himself to enemy fire on at least two occasions to locate and recover three fallen Marines and one fallen Navy corpsman. His exceptional leadership and stout resistance against the enemy during six hours of continuous fighting rallied his teammates and effectively disrupted the enemy's assault.